Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Tough times never last, but tough people do. Uh, hope you had a great week. It's uh, Wednesday night. I'm Michael Kazilny, and um, we've got a couple of uh, young fellas uh, on the couch who uh, are fair income enough to come and share their stories and hopefully, hopefully inspire some people to uh, stay away from that crap lifestyle of um, committing crime and drugs. And that's what the show is all about, really. We've uh, had about um, uh, hundreds of guests on the couch over the last five years. It used to be called A Life in Crime. It's now called Tough Times. And uh, some of the viewers have been watching us for over five years, and I thank you very much for that. And I thank you for all the people coming up on the street saying, G'day, Michael, yeah, keep up the good work. Because I was thinking of uh, quitting a few times, because a lot of hard work trying to get all the people together and all the volunteers, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep on going for a while anyway. Thanks very much for coming on, bro. No worries, man. Thank you very much, Matt and Corey. And uh, a couple of boys from Broad Meadows. And if you, if, if you put your two ages together, you're my age. <laughs> so you're allowed to muck up, you know. You're only 22 and 22. No, I'm 23. 23, bro. Yeah. 23. But both from Broad Meadows, known each other since the old school days, dated the same girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. But isn't it amazing? You, you grew up, and obviously something happened along the way. I, 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 you, you, you're fantastic, fellas. But I hear hear the stories about. Um, you, you, uh, ice and uh, party drugs, and then uh, I, th I think you even committed an armed robbery when you're younger, completely off the rails, yeah. to a point when you even wanted to kill yourself at one stage, you got so down. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? How did it all start for you, Matt? Uh, don't know, I grew up a bit too old for me time, so then I grew up around my uncles and that, around the alcohol. So I started drinking when I was 13. Fair income. Yeah, by the time I was 16, I was dependent on it. It was like full alcohol. Fair dinkum, were, were they uncles pretty big drinkers? Yeah. yeah every, every night, every weekend. They used to all come around to me nan's joint. We had a pool table and that there, bar set up. So yeah, it was just all alcohol. And you just grew, grew up around that and thought that was the normal thing to do? Yeah, pretty much. And they didn't mind if you, were, were, when, you, when you started drinking as a teenager, they didn't mind? No. It was part of the lifestyle? Yeah. And uh, with that, I suppose you wanted more excitement, and uh, then uh, did that then get get onto the drugs? Yeah. Started hanging out with people that are older than me. I used to get into the drugs, clubbing and shit. So by the time I was 13, 14, started trying eckies, and then that uh, would be a bit boring. But by the time I was 16, yeah, I tried everything that was on the market. Fair dinkum. Yeah. And and how did you afford it? You work, you'd work during the day. Yeah, I used to work. And then blow all your money on the on the drugs. Yeah, pretty much. What did you take? Everything. It, Speed, ice, coke, eckies, then did the bad mistake of trying heroin, just because, I don't know. It's How did you get onto the heroin? Like, the party drugs are one thing, you know, you get the... Oh, I, was just, I was at my dealer's joint, and the dealer's said, oh, there's a bloke here that's going to shoot up, it's up to you whether you want to watch it or whatever, and I watched it, and it was a bit freaky, as soon as he, like, he sat there and tied up his arm, injected, and as soon as he released the... Like the strap around his arm, he sort of just fell back in the couch and spaced it. So it put me off. I thought, no, I never touch it. But yeah, one night I was off me nut and decided to try it. When you went through all this, were you really down, or were you celebrating like, like you see all the people at the nightclub celebrating? Nah. And were nah, you I was down? down? Yeah, that's why I used to get on the drugs. I suffered from depression and past family history and shit. Fair dinkum. Yeah. So at school, I remember. Uh, I remember when we went to court there. At, at school, you said um, uh, you didn't. You didn't have a good. Uh, you didn't enjoy school, did you? No. Nah. I didn't. Nah. I didn't. I was I... in trouble all the time. Suspended. <coughs> I was a bit, little bit racist because we had a lot of Lebanese and Turks at school. So. Did you fight at school? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Had and had, how did you meet yourself. the great man Corey here? So the, the quiet one, Corey. What, what's going on with you, <laughs> mate? I saw you at the Broadmeadows Magistrates Court, and I said, uh, I said he's got a good mate there. Never been in trouble. Never taken drugs. And then what did you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did you say? Yeah, you you said no. Drugs, done this. No, no. You said no. I've tried it all. You said I've I've taken. What have What have you taken? Tell, tell me. Ice, speed, coke, liquid G, liquid fantasy, all of it bar H. I haven't tried that. It's it's a cabinet full of stuff. Liquid fantasy and this sort of stuff. So you've been on on all sorts of trips. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I it was, mean. It was fun at the time, but yeah, when I think about it now, waste of time. Yeah, I mean, I got that from the court. You, you, you're one of those uh, friendly people. You're always smiling, and I thought when you said to me, I've, "I've been on all this stuff," I thought you're still on it, but no, you're not. Yeah. You, you, when did you kick that kick the habit? About four months ago, I stopped. You just decided enough is enough. Yeah. Cause what, what was it doing to your mind, Corey? What was it doing to your mind? I uh, didn't have a mind really. No. When I was on it. 
So I'm uh, off my face, sleeping, working, off my face. And, and so your personality would have been crap at work? No, actually I worked faster. You work faster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what happens a lot of the time, doesn't it, folks? Uh, people drink so much coffee that some people have, uh, I mean, we've, we're in a coffee uh, society, aren't we? People have these little espressos and some have about uh, five to ten a day and uh, they, they work really fast and everything, but at the same time you talk to them and they, they explode in anger. It's like a lot of the football players, they take those uh, caffeine tablets and, um, and uh, you always get a lot of hairdressers and people in the entertainment industry. Don't talk to them on a Monday morning, they're so moody, aren't they? Because they, uh, they have their party nights on, uh, on Sundays, don't they? Uh, yep. Everybody's on the drugs. And what's happening to society? Everyone's on drugs. Um, um, and, and, and of course, um, you're off your head half the time, Matt. And then how did you do, do, do this armed rob? Were you influenced to do it or were you just off your, off your tree? Nah, or... I was charged with armed robbery, but it's not like I didn't go hold anyone up. I, I, had, I was living with my nan at the time. Yeah, she's a lovely lady. I, I met his uh, grandma at court, uh, and she's a beautiful person, isn't she? What's her yeah. name again? Phyllis. Phyllis, yeah, uh, lovely, lovely lady. I got charged with armed robbery against her. Against her? Mm. That's right. Because I threatened her. That's and right. Took her car. That's what it was. You know, isn't it amazing? We hear the, um, the term armed robbery, and we think of uh, Chopper Reed with a shotgun. Uh, kicking down a door, raping people and uh, stealing $10,000, but um, good old Phyllis. Yeah. See, I didn't do my research here, did I? Nah. Poor old Phyllis, she's a, she's a lovely lady. Yeah. And I never do my research, you see, because it's, it's good to keep it fresh. But, but uh, so you went through some tough times with Grandma? Yeah. Well, I mean, Nan's always looked after us. She's, she's always yeah. been there for us. Yeah. Pretty much grew up with me Nan and that. So you went through those tough times and then sorted things out with her? Yeah. And you live with her, don't you? I used to live with her. That's when I was getting into drugs, Coon. And then when I did that, I threatened her with a knife and took her car just to get away because I didn't know what I was doing. And then, yeah, I was actually glad, even though I got the criminal record of armed robbery to my name, I'm actually glad I did it now. Like, because it's the only thing that pulled me ahead in and yeah, I got off because, the drugs because of that. Because obviously, folks, at the magistrate's court, you know, we, we muck up, we get a summons, and within uh, a few months, we're in court, uh, and uh, it's water under the bridge. But if we go to the county court, it's a very, very lengthy experience and a stressful experience. Uh, you know, I've even known people who've um, decided to suicide before uh, facing the county court because they turn that legal problem into a mental monster. And that's what happens, isn't it? It's not just a, a few weeks. It's, it's a process of about seven or a, a months or a year, isn't it? Uh, and you had to go through that committal mention or this and that. No, I didn't have to do all that because I was only juvie. Oh, okay. I was only 16 at the time. And what, did, what was the outcome? Uh, no conviction and that was it. So the, the, the magistrate or the judge listened to the story yeah. and appreciated what you did. but Yeah, I had to do like a lot of drug and alcohol cancelling and see psychs and shit. For yeah. Me. I had like yeah, depression and me drinking and taking drugs and that. Yeah. So, yeah. Nope. And it all ended, we went, we went to court and we had a, a big drink driving offence there, we had a few priors, but it's all water under the bridge now, isn't it? Mm. You're getting some good counselling from... Uh, yeah, uh, your mate Yorks. Oh yeah, he's a good man. Yeah. That's right, and Alita knows York, because we saw him at, uh, he plays in a band as well, he's a top man, isn't he? Yeah. We'll yeah, talk about uh, how we changed our life around very shortly, but uh, uh, you're watching Tough Times, uh, don't go away. And welcome back to the show. On the couch tonight, we've got two uh, lovely gentlemen from uh, Broad Meadows, the old Broadie boys. Were you Broadie boys? No, we grew up in Glenroy. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the, the good thing is we can, <laughs> we can laugh about this and uh, it's no use to be all depressed and all serious about it. But, you know, if they've gone down that trail of drugs and depression, all that sort of stuff, but they're both here to say they've given up all that uh, nasty lifestyle, haven't they? Because um, what comes around goes around, doesn't it? I always, uh, you know, every day when I wake up, Corey, I think, uh, I think of karma, you know, what every, every action has a reaction. Yeah. I read it in so many books. You sort of get it when you're older. I'm 45 now, but uh, it's almost like everything we do, say, or even think has a corresponding effect, you know? Yeah. And it's like in the break you told me you got chased by Asians and with guns and knives. <laughs> you know, that, that's only because you, you chose that lifestyle. But tell me about that crap when, um, when you're in the drug scene. What, who, who chased you around? Oh, uh, one night I was at my dealer's house and somebody lit a fire on the Asian's front like lawn. Then we came back from Crown 
So you went to your drug dealer's house, yeah. and, and, and who was on the lawn? Oh, the, like people across the road, like lit a fire on their front doorstep on the Asians. They had a fire? Yeah. Yeah. Then we copped the blame for it. And then next thing we know, we got home from Crown, there was no one in the street. Next thing you see is all Asians come from everywhere, and yeah, had to run for my life. Oh, a whole bunch of Asians. How yeah. many? Well, 20? About 100 plus. Yeah. It's scary, isn't it? Oh, yeah, Knives and guns. I remember, uh, folks, uh, a few years ago, probably about probably 15 years ago now, I was down in the city, um, and uh, these drunken guys came up and said, you, you got to smoke, bro, you got to smoke? And I said, no, no, I don't smoke. And they said, what'd you say? Do you call me a, a, a black nigger or something? All of a sudden, uh, I'm fighting with this one bloke, and uh, my, my mate's fighting the other one, and all of a sudden, another 75 blokes just um, came running towards us, and, oh, it, we, we had to escape at the end. I don't think anybody can handle 75 blokes. No. But no, um, no beatings or shootings or... No. All good? Yeah, it's all good. All good. Many fights at school, Corey? You were sort of uh, growing up in that area? No. I was a good boy in school. <laughs> <laughs> well, you seem such a, uh, like such a wholesome uh, guy, and you are, but uh, why did you get onto the drugs? Oh, I was bored one day. I just tried it, and I liked it. And then it was just a habit for about seven, eight years. <laughs> Bored for it, I just tried it. And, and, and what, what's the advice you give to, um, to sort of people who, uh, you know, a lot of people are having fun at school. Everything seems to be turning out just fine, doesn't it? Some people are just blessed, I think. They're just lucky. They grow up in uh, wealthy families and uh, they get great traineeships, fantastic jobs, you know, a BMW or a Porsche when they're 18 and overseas holidays in the south of France. But others just aren't that lucky. Um, if somebody's depressed or is getting bullied at school, um, and they want to sort of take the drugs. What's your advice there? Don't touch it, stay away. Stay away? Yeah. Fair income or yeah. deep down you think, oh, I might have another E tonight? Nah. <laughs> Go on, bro, tell the truth. <laughs> nah, I'm off it you for know? good. Stay yeah. away, don't touch it. Stay yeah. I mean, all the viewers watching and even the older ones, uh, we've all tried a drug in our lifetime, you know, even alcohol or cigarettes or dope or speed or cocaine. I mean, human beings get stressed. There's about 60,000 thoughts going through our minds every single day. Um, and unless we clear those thoughts, uh, you know, eventually it will come a time when we, when we get burnt out. That's why so many people are seeing counsellors and psychologists. You know, I tend to meditate uh, every day for at least 60 minutes and, um, and that sort of got me through the stressful issues. I, I lost uh, fear 15 years ago. I sort of see life in a much bigger picture now. I think we, we are born and then we die. And in between, you're going to get all those challenges along the way, aren't you? Yep. You know, I think, I think living a life without challenges is like being one of those bumper punk car rides. It's always going to happen, isn't it? Yep. But being young is tough, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's tough. Unemployment, uh, self-esteem issues, which chick is going to take us out uh, you know, to bed and all this <laughs> sort of stuff, you know? It's tough, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's, it's it, it, right, the 20s and the 30s, we're still finding ourselves. You know, I, I always think that uh, people really grow up, especially blokes, grow up when they're 40. I'm 45 now, but it's sort of, you really, I really got it there around about 40. It takes a long time, doesn't it? But I think you got it, Matt. You got it. Well, you, I'm about you got, to say, I've still got 17 years to go. No, you got your shit together pretty well. Yeah. You know, you're, I mean, you're on the way. You're still going to make a few mistakes along the way. But if, if, if we went out tonight and I said, look, there's a couple of hot chicks there at bar 20, they're finishing early, you know. I know a couple of the girls, they've got a bit of coke and a bit of speed and a bit of French champagne. And I think she might even have a bit of a smack. Go on, give it a shot. Would you come out and join us? Um. <laughs> Do I have to answer that? <laughs> Depends how good looking they were. I was about to say that. No, you, 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 in, nah, in, in a normal world, you just, nah. no. Nah. Because you rang me one time, remember that uh, when we had to, uh, that legal issue and that, you know, mm. and you thought, uh, you thought, stuff it, you know. It's, uh, yeah, I was going to give up. You, you g gave up, I could feel it, I could just sense it. You gave up, you thought, oh, and, uh, and, and I just let it go. I didn't chase you, you know, but after a while you, you called back and you cleaned yourself up there. Yeah. You know, but you must have hit rock bottom there, did you? Yeah, because well, I thought I was going inside and that, so I just, yeah, I thought, give up, what's the point in yeah. trying? I was just going and cop with all cops sort of thing and that. Yeah, good. And the magistrate gave you a, a good chance, and uh, mm. and you know they, they looked at the uh, the wholesome and they looked at the total picture of Matt Spence. Not only your a wrongdoing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And work's going well. Yep. Work's going extremely well. You've got your own house. Yep. I was talking to Matt in the uh, in the break, folks, and quite amazing. He's only 22, but he's got his own house, 
and he's, uh, I was speaking to Corey, and Corey says he's got the best furniture there. He's got his leather lounge suite and a flat screen TV, and he's got all the good stuff. You sure you're not a drug dealer? Because no. <laughs> the drug dealers have nice homes, don't they? I used to. Uh, <laughs> some do, some don't. You used to be a drug dealer? Yeah. Hey. Good well, money? No. Nah. No. But, Only because um, I used to take more than what I was selling. Well, that's exactly right. You get into the drug scene, and I suppose everybody becomes a drug dealer, don't they? Yeah. Because uh, drug trafficking or drug dealing is um, basically the uh, definition for trafficking means selling, giving, sharing. So, uh, so I suppose most people who take drugs are drug traffickers, aren't they? And then we've got to get them from somewhere. We yep. associate with people. And, and are you glad, Corey, that you don't have to buy the stuff anymore? Yeah, because I never used to pay for it anyway. Didn't you? No. Why? Because my best mate was a drug dealer. Is he still your best mate? No, don't hardly talk to him. What happened? What happened in that relationship? As soon as I stopped taking drugs, yeah, friendship went down the drain. Isn't it funny how friends, we always have to be connected. Uh, there's got to be a common interest, doesn't there? Yep. I used to have a lot of mates who uh, drank a lot of uh, fuel, you know, a lot of beers, and uh, they'd want to go out and uh, start drinking at 7.30 and finish at 3 o'clock in the morning until you fell over. But uh, once you change your life and don't do that anymore, people sort of uh, drift apart, don't they? Yeah, pretty much. So what do the boys do for fun now? Do you, do you hang out together much? Yeah, yeah it's my second family. <laughs> Is it? Me, yeah, because I live by myself and his house all the time. Oh, good. So uh, mum and dad uh, have known Matt for a long time? Yeah. And you're, Corey, you're, you're off work for a while, are you? Yeah. You're, you're a butcher in, uh, when you usually work? Yeah. Tell me about, tell me about work. Well, it's just a normal job, figuring, well, unload trucks, cut the meat up, and all that stuff. Do you like it? Yeah, I love blood and guts. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> yeah. You enjoy it? Yeah. And I suppose you get a few um, f uh, fresh steaks out of it? No. No? No, I've got to figure and pay for it. We'll come back in, uh, after the next break and talk about the blood and guts, but we'll be back very shortly <laughs> with uh, Matt and Corey on uh, Tough Times. Welcome back to the show. Hope you're having a great time this Wednesday night. Uh, I'm Michael Kazilny, and uh, if you've got an interesting story to share or you've been through some tough times, uh, please give me a call or email me. We've got Matt and Corey on the couch who are down to earth enough to come and share their stories. And uh, we've heard about uh, they met each other at school and uh, both had their individual tough times, got into the drugs, got off, committed a bit of crime. You, Corey, you were lucky you didn't go to court. Yep. And um, I don't think you ever will. No. You're doing all the right things. Yep. Yeah, have a girlfriend now? Or? Yeah, I'm engaged. Engaged? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> we'll forget about that bar 20 story then. And, <laughs> and um, what does your girlfriend do? Sit at home. <laughs> <laughs> Stay at home looking after her niece and nephews, that's it. Yeah. So what are your plans? What, what, do you set your goals and stuff? What, what, uh, what do you want to do in five years' time, ten years' time? Do you think about stuff like that? No, just take it day by day. Day by day. Yeah. Well, what about you, Matt? You, you've got a good job. I mean, uh, you, uh, you're a qualified carpenter. Uh, you, you must sort of set your goals because, I mean, you don't just... Uh, no, I don't really. That. That's no? my problem. That's sort of half my problem is I don't set goals. Yeah? But at the moment, yeah, because of my alcohol cancelling, they'll do. Yeah. It's part of me things to set goals and that, so... Yeah. I suppose it's good, isn't it? Uh, Whatever we sort of think about expands, and uh, I, I never used to set goals until um, probably about 15 years ago. But I sort of um, I, I think it's good to have a roadmap for your future, and, uh, and a lot of people do have goals. Um, some people even surround themselves with pictures and that sort of stuff of um, you know holidays they want to take and places they want to see. So we've established now after all this talk that uh, drugs can be fun on a temporary basis, but over a period of time, it's just going to stuff you up, isn't it? Yep. So, so, Matt, would you say to, um, to some young teenagers, don't even try the shit? Because some people, yeah. say, some people say, viewers, that uh, you know, life's a personal ex exploration and we've got to go through the fire. We've got to go through the domestics and the fights and uh, we've got to get drunk one time and fall over. And um, they say life's a personal exploration. We can't be told by others, you know. What do you say about that? Yeah, I agree with that. I would have to say that, yeah, I wouldn't try it, even though I have and all that. But after getting the help... And realising how much help is out there and that, that you don't have to try this shit. Like, I was only no. trying it to fit in and 
Plus, I had depression and that, and all I had to do was go see a cancer or a shrink or something like that. And yeah. Have, most probably wouldn't have me pass that I have. No. I mean, criminal convictions and that, but at the same time, I can't take back the past. Just look ahead. No, depression is an amazing thing, isn't it? It's, it's intriguing to me because, I mean, I mean, you've got the full package. You look good, you know. The, the, the girls like you. You've got a great job which pays, uh, you know, close to a grand a week for a 22-year-old. You've got your own house with all the, uh, the furniture and the, uh, the pad and, um, and the uh, U-Porn channel there set up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got, you've, you've got it all, uh, you know. And uh, really, if somebody else saw you, they'd, they'd say, well, this guy should be happy. He's got it all. But I suppose depression is inside it. It's an yeah, inside it's job, it. isn't it? Yeah, it's all inside. It's not what's out there. And, and now the counselling's helping significantly, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the right view, isn't it? Uh, even happiness is an inside job, isn't it? The actual events don't make us happy. I mean, you might go to a St Kilda match and uh, half the people are going to be happy uh, celebrating and the other half people are going to be crying saying, uh, gee, long lost. So um, happiness is really a reaction to different events, isn't it? So if we... Uh, I suppose if we become a bit more resilient and, um, and talk ourselves into happiness, um, then we are happy, isn't it? Pretty much. Is that the way it works? I'm still trying to work it out. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, we re self talk's important, isn't it? You know, I reckon we can talk ourselves into, uh, into sickness or happiness. Do you talk to yourself much, uh, Corey? <laughs> <laughs> no. I do. No? No. You have to, don't you? I do. I live by myself. I've got no one else to talk yeah, to. Yeah, you've got to talk to yourself. <laughs> I talk to myself in the car sometimes when I'm driving along. You know, I sort of um, talk to myself about... Uh, sometimes I do these sunrise interviews with uh, Mel and Koshy about some legal stuff and I talk to myself in the car on the way to the Docklands and uh, people sound their horn and they think you're on the phone and everything. Uh, yeah, it's funny that in, in the cars people are always watching, aren't they? Yeah. Everyone's in a hurry. Everyone's in a hurry. People don't greet each other anymore, don't do they? Nope. I was at the Melbourne Magistrates Court the other day, folks, and uh, inside everybody was depressed. Nobody said good day, and uh, except a few of the lawyers were socialising. Outside, even the outside, everybody was in a hurry. Everybody was busy. Back in Brighton, I was at the 7-Eleven store. The, everybody, well, I saw all these real estate agents. Everyone's busy running around. You know, sometimes we should just really shy away from busyness and just enjoy the moment. Don't you reckon? Enjoy each other. You know, say good day to each other. Find out how we're feeling. And I think be a bit more authentic, because a lot of people are so pretentious, aren't they? You know, I'm this, I'm that. People ask you in the street, how are you, Corey? Oh, great, how are you? Oh, good. Don't you think it's important just to be fair income and straight down the line? If you're feeling shit, you tell them, you're feeling yeah. crap, you know? Yeah, it's time straight out. You're pretty much like that, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's what gets in trouble. <laughs> it, well, it's good to be, I, I think it's really good for you to be real and... Uh, because at school you get these beautiful little children, I see this in my children's eyes, they're eight and six, you know, they're so na natural and then you see all these adults who are so pretentious who build up these fake masks, you know, and unfortunately children I think get moulded, uh, you know, they've got to be something, they've got to be the lawyer, the accountant, the builder, you know, they've got to earn money, uh, but it's, um, Western society is very much materialistic, don't you think? It's all about money, isn't it? But money doesn't make you happy, does no. it? We know plenty of people with heaps of money who, aren't, who are still depressed. Oh, that's it. Yeah. And Matt, what are the plans for the future? What, uh, what, what's the great man going to do in the next uh, three out of your 20s? What do you want to do? Start your own business or work for the same mob? Nah, well, the new mob I'm with now. They look after me. They look after you well? Good money, yeah. Good. Guarantee work, so. And now you've said you, you, you've had enough of the nightclub scene, the violence, the, uh, the binge drinking, the party drugs. Um, to a lot of people... They're doing that every Friday and Saturday night, and we see it in the papers. Uh, yeah, I know. You know, what, what do you think about that scene? Well, everyone's got to live it. But, um, yeah. I don't know, I suppose, because I did more earlier. I'm over it now, so... When you went out, was there more weapons and knives on the street? Nah, not really, not as much. No? But I used to go out a lot in Geelong, because I, I was living in Geelong at the time. So, a bit of a different scene. It's not as busy down there. So now on the weekends, what do you do? Do you have for fun? Not much. Cruise around the city. And what's your advice, trip? finally, to... Um, to uh, to people who are taking drugs and uh, are depressed, what's what's your advice on the, what's the one thing you can say? Uh, most probably say it's not worth it. Gets you with a lot of shit, and better off going out and getting help. There's a lot of help out there for everybody. Thank you very much, boys.
Thank you very much for the pleasure of your company. Love and best wishes to everybody watching in Melbourne. And, uh, and what Matt said is completely true. There's a lot of help out there. So don't be shy. Be, uh, be open. Share your problems. And if you're feeling crap, tell people. If you're feeling good, tell people. But um, thank you very much for watching once again. Take good care. We'll see you next week.